Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps. Thank you once and always for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. The 2023 NFL and Minnesota Vikings season preview. There's optimism, there's this, there's that, there's pessimism, but Minnesota Vikings roster is set at long last. That's why I always wait until <laughs> we get the roster set, until I, and also when I have time to do the show here on Labor Day weekend. Great to be back on board with you, of course, to talk about the season preview. We're going to talk about some of the different transactions and such along the way. Of course, the uh, 12-man practice squad. I'm almost tempted to jump into that first. I'm like terrified of like forgetting to even mention the players, but no, I'll, I'll hopefully get to that without being silly and forgetting stuff. Um, obviously, constant distractions everywhere all the time. As, uh, yep, we have our depth chart. We have players that have been let go. We have this and that. We have our lads with the overall depth chart. The players getting cut, the transactions this and that. Hopefully <laughs> things cooperating with us along the way as well. Um, along the way, the Vikings actually signed a David Quisen, uh, Quessenberry after making a trade a few days earlier with the Patriots to acquire a six-round pick, trading away uh, one of the tackles here. I'm blanking. I had it up, and of course, you know how that works. There he is. Um, Vidarian Lowe was traded to the New England Patriots for a six-round pick, and also along the way, Jalen Rager was uh, later on cut and wound up with the Patriots practice squad. So that's a, a bit of conversation as well. Um, uh, the Vikings did sign Jordan Ta'amu, Ta- Ta- who is an XFL star, and then let him go a few days later. Unfortunately, did not wind up with the practice squad either. So just about uh, about 10 days with the Minnesota Vikings, unfortunately. And again, did not wind up with the Minnesota Vikings practice squad. The Vikings running back situation. Uh, Kanae Nwongwu was placed on injured reserve, so he's unavailable for at least the first four games. Nwongwu pretty much didn't do anything the entire preseason and led to some frustrations. No real information as to what the injury was. Also, again, speaking of injuries, dare we say fake injuries, real injuries, whatever. Uh, Nwongwu's injury is probably real, but the Vikings did keep him despite the frustrations and all that. Um, mostly because he's one of the best special teamers that there are, basically, in the whole NFL. So when it comes to returning, uh, Dwayne McBride also let go, but went up with the practice squad. Just disappointing, not all that great, not ready for the NFL at all. And, of course, one-dimensional, like a guy named Adrian Peterson many years ago, uh, a guy that fumbles, a guy that doesn't block well and all that. So kind of annoying. Uh, Jalen Rager also sounded kind of like a surly guy. There was like a sound bite. Um, with, uh, was it uh, uh, the Star Tribune um, Daily Delivery <laughs> host? I believe that would be Michael Rand there. Um, basically where, yeah, I mean, Jalen Rager, just kind of a surly guy, not really the best. He's like, what was our best memory of Jalen Rager? Well, right here. And it was basically where um, Michael Rand was just trying to basically crack a little joke about a special team play that happened one time where a guy accidentally blocked his own punter's punt off his butt. And then Jalen Rager's like, doesn't have anything to do with me. It's like, what a jerk. What an asshole. So <laughs> that's kind of, that was basically my instant response. I'd be like, wow, what an asshole. Um, I even have sound bites that can uh, attest to that. Wow, what an asshole. I understand if you're having a, maybe you're having a bad day and just not in the mood to crack a joke with somebody. Or basically, you know, <clears throat> maybe you're frustrated with all your career has gone thus far. But I don't know. I, I think that's probably the last thing you want to do is be a surly jackass. So, I mean, seriously, it kind of is what it is. So Jalen Reger, I guess that's our best memory with him. He is on the Patriots practice squad. We'll see how that turns out. So we will now refer to our lads for the depth chart, wide receivers um, that were kept. Of course, the main guys, Justin Chevers and Big Shocker. Uh, these are the wideouts, of course. Jordan Addison, those are the main wideouts. Uh, slot receiver K.J. Osborne, of course, that's my guy. The Vikings also kept uh, Jalen Naylor, despite being hurt and missing time and such as well. Kind of frustrating a bit. And Brandon Powell was a nice little surprise. So congratulations, Brandon Powell, making the Minnesota Vikings roster, at least at this time. That would be uh, five receivers. 
Left tackle Christian Derisaw. Christian Derisaw, of course. He'll be backed up by that David Quin uh, Quisenberry. Uh, there's also some versatile backups along the way. But no, Christian Derisaw, the left tackle, right tackle, of course, is Brian O'Neill. So the Vikings have great bookends at the tackle position. Ed Ingram, again, also, you know, was a rookie. Well, yeah, was a rookie last year. Struggled off and on, but still ended up, uh, still ends up coming out as the starter, believe it or not. Garrett Bradbury re-signed in the offseason after having a nice contract year. We'll see how he responds. Yeah, again, contract year. We'll see how he responds after that. <clears throat> Ezra Cleveland, who supposedly might be in his last season with the Vikings, might be looking to be a tackle elsewhere. So we'll see what happens there. The Vikings guard situation, not the best. Cleveland's just kind of middle of the road. Ed Ingram's below average so far, and Garrett Bradbury finally did something last year. Austin Schlotman, who recovered from a broken leg. Really nice and versatile um, center, guard center, this and that type of situation with him. Blake Brandle, also versatile. He can play some tackle, and uh, Ole Udo can play tackle and guard. Uh, very good backup tackle at times, but then again, he didn't have a very good preseason, but still ends up coming back to the Minnesota Vikings. As Remember, he was the right guard just uh, two years ago, you know, by force, because he obviously is a tackle, but was playing out of position. Um, I was talking about injuries, and then I got sidetracked here with my own thought process, so my apologies. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, again, was basically a hold-in during the course of the, you know, last couple of weeks here. He was a hold-in with a, uh, let's see, it was an ear infection. Uh, he was hurt, yeah, like, where's TJ Hawkinson? Oh, it was an ear infection. Uh, now his back is stiff. And now he's signed to a four-year, $68 million, $68.5 million contract. So TJ Hawkinson, over $17 million a year, will be one of the highest-paid tight ends in the NFL. Backed up by Josh Oliver, who, well, he can play at the same time, as well as arguably the best blocking tight end there is in the entire NFL, acquired from the Baltimore Ravens. Johnny Munt, who was uh, brought up as the best third tight end in football by head coach Kevin O'Connell. And then Nick Muse, who played his way into the lineup. Nick Muse makes the Minnesota Vikings main roster, not the practice squad. They were afraid he'd probably get uh, claimed this time, or last year he was on the practice squad. But Nick Muse, seventh round pick, two years, or last season, uh, excuse me, in 22, two drafts ago, basically. And uh, he makes the Minnesota Vikings roster as a fourth tight end. Nick Muse. Ooh, interesting. And of course, as we stay on the offensive side of the ball, <clears throat> that would be the running backs and fullbacks. Of course, fullback C.J. Ham, of course, back with the Minnesota Vikings. He came to the Vikings in 2016, and he's been here ever since. Green Eggs and Ham, I like to call him, coming in from Duluth, and he's he's a nice t- he's a nice fullback. Almost called him a tight end, but obviously they do similar jobs in terms of blocking and all that. C.J. Ham, obviously happy to have him still a member of the Vikings and happy to have a fullback. Remember, Adrian Peterson used to, like, hate having a fullback. It's like, okay, that's great. Running back, Alexander Madison. Of course, third-round pick in 2019, number two, which drives me absolutely nuts. I like the uh, classic numbers. At least Ty Chandler is 32. Uh, coming in again, a fifth-round pick in 2022, Ty Chandler from North Carolina. Obviously, super talented individual. A lot of people like him. Uh, first preseason game. Looked awfully promising. And then, uh, you know, after that, not a whole lot to celebrate. The preseason was pretty crappy, to be quite honest, to prevail, to, uh, with, for lack of better words. Miles Gaskin acquired, again, from the for the Minnesota Vikings as a, uh, as a free agent. Miles Gaskin coming in from the Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins. And, of course, uh, acquainted with Flores, of course, who was the head coach there in Miami just two years ago. So Miles Gaskin comes in, kind of, you know, one of those... He could be a third down, running back, that type of thing. We'll see what his role is at the end of the day. Ty Chandler looked as the number two. Gaskin looked as the number three. We'll have to wait and see. We'll see how long Gaskin is on the Minnesota Vikings. It all depends with Kenny Nwangwu and all that. But Gaskin, obviously, there's something there. He's had uh, multiple seasons with three touchdowns. He's had 600 yards. So there's something there. Obviously, it's not like, oh, God, who's that guy? You know, Obviously, there's something to talk about. would like to pull him up here. They had him up, and I, uh, yep, again, he was a seventh-round pick by the Miami Dolphins in 2019. So actually carving out a decent career, uh, five foot ten, 200, so one of those shorter running backs, uh, 388 yards in 2020, the greatest year ever, according to nobody, except for, uh, let's leave that alone. Um, no fumbles in his career, so knock on wood. Knock on wood, no fumbles in his career. <laughs> Seven games in 2020. 
Uh, what am I even talking about? Yep, seven. Wow, actually, I'm very impressed about certain statistics here, actually. Um, he's gotten in the end zone quite a bit, to be quite fair. Um, seven games in 20, uh, 2019, 10 games in 2020, 17 games, all 17 games in 21, and last year only four games. So that's quite unfortunate with what took place there. Uh, seven rushing touchdowns, three in 2020, three in 21. Of course, one is a rookie. Receiving, though, receiving. See, these are actually impressive numbers, and it makes you want to kind of keep him. So, um, like I said, 600 yards running and all that on the ground. In 20, well, let's just go back to the beginning. 2019, 133 yards and a touchdown. 20, uh, this is rushing, of course. 2020, 584 yards, three touchdowns. It's like, not like, oh my God, great. But it's something, 4.1 a carry. Um, 2021, 60, excuse me, 612 yards. And this is in much more games and more and, and a few more carries. Uh, so um, 3.5 yards a carry, but did get in the end zone three times. He did actually lose three fumbles along the way. It's not showing what time, like when they happened. It's just showing like the total of his career. So he did fumble the ball. I'm looking at his receiving instead accidentally here. Um, he had 41 catches him being Gaskin in 2020. 41 catches for 388 yards in 2020 with two touchdowns. 2021, he had 49 catches, 234 yards and four touchdowns. So again, reeks of being a nice third down running back, actually. You know, maybe like obviously a very poor man's Chester Taylor, but okay, I could see why he's in the NFL. Uh, definitely carved out something, but unfortunately last year, just only six catches, no, four catches, pardon me, 28 yards, that's it. And then only attempted four runs last year in four games. Uh, ten runs in four games for only 26 yards. Mm. So I'm not sure what's going on. Last year must have been hurt and all that. So I'm not the, you know, but that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of, <laughs> obviously, the Miami Dolphins could have been a hell of a lot better last year if not for injuries to important players, and especially their quarterback. And then even Teddy Bridgewater when he came in, oof, it was really sad. It looked like he'd aged about 15 years. It was weird. He didn't even look like close, close to the same guy that we've uh, talked about in the past. Um, continuing on to the defense before I talk about the uh, practice squad, because I'm not going to forget the practice squad, damn it. Defensively, Dean Lowry, left defensive end. Dean Lowry, number 94. Kyris Tonga will be in the starting lineup, at least according to our lads. Number 95, Kyris Tonga. And, I've, and he did have a nice season last year. Nose tackle. Right defensive end, Harrison Phillips. A lot of people would agree that's the best group there. He's the best of that group. Abdinal Hunter, left outside linebacker, of course, re-signed in the offseason for a single year, but $20 million bucks. Jordan Hicks, the captain of the uh, the captain and veteran of the linebackers. He will be the, uh, yep, he's the, uh, he's the linebacker there, of course. He'll be the captain. Uh, the middle linebacker, um, Brian Asamoah the second. Asama, Asama. Supposedly it's Asama, according to the you know according to the horse's mouth. Middle linebacker Brian Asama, Troy Die. Okay, we'll get back to him in a minute. Uh, ref, le- right outside linebacker again. These are pass rushers potentially with Daniel Hunter and Marcus Davenport again coming from the New Orleans Saints, of course. And again, very promising, highly touted player coming in, but unfortunately has not uh, reached his potential yet. Um, the uh, the reserves will be uh, Pat Jones the second and Andre Carter makes the team. Uh, a lot of people are a bit surprised with that one because he didn't he basically did nothing in the preseason and, and practice didn't look all that good. He was a free agent. The Vikings guaranteed him three hundred thousand. So I guess woohoo. Yeah. Speaking of uh, backups being guaranteed money or excuse me, uh, undrafted free agents being guaranteed money. That would be uh, Ivan Pace Jr. who looked really really good. Obviously, um, can be overpowered a bit because of his lack of size, but. There's the other side of it. His skill level is incredible. Um, he put up numbers that just nobody did. He was like just about the best linebacker in college football, but unfortunately his size is what scared people away from con- from uh, even committing a seventh-round pick to Ivan Pace Jr., which I do think will be a major regret for a lot of teams, actually. Um, not sure why, honestly, why people would everybody would pass on him when clearly he has a skill level to make a National Football League team. He's at least a number two right now, and he's probably going to be a starter someday. We'll see, but maybe not. Uh, Troy Die, Troy Die, pardon me again, fourth round pick in 2020. We'll be behind Brian Asamoa. Uh, DJ Wanham will be one of the reserves behind Davenport at the moment. Again, fourth round pick in 2020. Cornerback, secondary, whatever you want to call it. Left cornerback, Caleb Evans. Fourth round pick in 2022 will be a starter. 
and he's looked really well, really good. Obviously, one of the better ones out there. Backed up by Andrew Booth Jr., who's been quite disappointing, who was a higher pick. So that's how it works sometimes. Uh, second round pick in 2022 will be backing up the fourth round pick in 2022. Yeah, Andrew Booth Jr. has not impressed anybody overall thus far. Injuries and his overall play when he's when he's been healthy, which is like five seconds, hasn't been all that great. Uh, Cameron Bynum Jr., nope, that's the safeties. We'll get back to that in a second. Makai Blackman, a third-round pick in 2023, will be starting at right cornerback. Pretty impressive at the end of the day. And we'll get back to the guy who I thought was going to be starting, but apparently won't even be on the team at the moment. Um, Najee Thompson, also a, but yeah, and another one of those rookie free agents in 2023, um, will be the other right cornerback at the moment. Um, and you could argue the, the main guy is going to be like, yeah, he's going to be the top cornerback. Byron Murphy Jr., he's a pretty young free agent from Arizona. And Jay Ward, a fourth-round pick in 23, of course, will be one of the backups there as well. Very, um, it's, a, it's a promising, it's a young, promising secondary when it comes to the cornerback position. Um, there's obviously one major veteran, and that would be Harrison Smith, who was taken in 2012, way back in the day now. He's been in the Pro Bowl. He's been, you know, he's, he's an all-pro type of guy. Might be a borderline Hall of Famer. We'll see how things turn out. Harrison Smith, of course, is going to be the captain of the secondary like he's been many times over, uh, backed up by Josh Metellus. But uh, obviously Josh Metellus is going to see tons and tons of time, obviously, and he, he, he might even be a captain uh, at this stage. He's obviously been a very nice player, for a significant amount of time. Now, he was a sixth-round pick in 2023, but one heck of a sixth-round pick. Josh Metellus. Cameron Bynum's the other starter at free safety. Cameron Bynum, fourth-round pick in 21, and just pretty much right out of the gate. Looked like a pretty nice player. Everybody likes what Cameron Bynum can do. And Lewis Steen's been disappointing, not, not, nonetheless. Um, looks like he might be a whiff of a draft pick. First-round pick in 2022 so far. Ten years after Harrison Smith. Obviously, now that he's healthy, looks like he overcompensates, and maybe it's just a maturity thing. Maybe he's going to grow, going to improve and all that. But maybe it seems like he bites too much, tries to do too much, kind of like some guys who could hit really hard in the past. That um, Guys that I've mentioned you know, many years in my podcasting for the Minnesota Vikings, free safeties, free safeties, strong safeties, whatever the heck they've been. Well, he can hit hard, but he can't. But yeah, but he gets beat like 50,000 times, and it's annoying as hell. Um Sometimes that's the nature of the beast. Oh, he can hit hard. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times in hockey, guys stay back. But no, in football as well. You can hit guys real hard. That's great. But what good is that going to do you if it doesn't work out? Um, the main punter, um, and I believe he's the holder as well. That would be uh, Ryan Wright, of course. Yep, we appreciate what he can do. One of the biggest, if not the largest punters in the league, and he's damn good. Greg Joseph, not, not, not everybody's too excited about him, but... I don't know. It's like he's he's limited on the long kicks and he misses extra points, which is stupid and annoying. Andrew DePaul is the long snapper, of course. Uh, the holder is Ryan Wright. That's what I thought. Um, kickoffs, Greg Joseph, yes, of course. He's, this isn't Mitch Berger time with like a you know 90-year-old place kicker like Gary Ann Morton Anderson. <laughs> Back in the day, Gary Ann Morton Anderson played for the Vikings. Unfortunately, Morton Anderson. Yeah, we all know what happened there with Morton Anderson. Knocking the Vikings out in the NFC title game in 98. Let's get off of that immediately. I still refuse to watch anything from that game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I will not. Sorry. I'm not watching that game. Nope. Too upsetting. I'm sorry. It's upsetting, man. It's, it's too painful. <sighs> Brandon Powell is the punt returner, at least at the moment. Kai, uh, Ty, not Kai. Ty Chandler is a kick returner. Brandon Powell is the backup kick returner for the Minnesota Vikings. That's kickoff returner. Practice squad Joe Juan Williams, the former New England Patriot, winds up on the practice squad. All right. Uh, Dwayne McBride winds up on the practice squad. T uh, Tristan Jackson. A lot of people really like him quite a bit. Hakeem Adeniji. Offensive tackle, of course. Um, yep, and the Vikings made some other signings that were really interesting. We're going to get to them now since they're right here in front of me. Uh... C.J. Condon Jr. Condon Jr. He's a safety. Tyrese Robinson, offensive guard. Jalen Williams, cornerback. Lucky. He's a lucky guy. Lucky Jackson. So multiple Jacksons at receiver. Cool. Rookie player there, number 15. Thayer Thomas, wide receiver as well. Benton Whitley, outside linebacker. 
Luigi, and it's but it's not spelled like Mario and Luigi. It's missing something, but uh, Luigi, <laughs> or is that correct? I don't know. Maybe that is how you spell it. I don't know. Doesn't look like it though. Luigi Mario, Lo, Luigi Villan, Luigi Villan. Hey Mario. Okay, outside linebacker there. Delton Day, no Sheldon Day, defensive end. That's what I'm looking at. T.J. Smith, nose tackle. Allen. Ali, Ellen Ali, uh, OC, 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 got it like that. Not offensive coordinator, but center. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, sorry. Byron Bird, no, Henry, what's wrong with me? Henry Bird, offensive guard, and a return of Nick Vigil returning to the Vikings, former Cincinnati Bengal. Nick Vigil coming back to the Vikings, inside linebacker, so... Cool. Um, I liked what he could do. He was a starter just a couple years ago, and he was kind of good. And then all of a sudden, he was gone. I was like, what the heck? Uh, reserves with injuries and such, of course. Uh, Chris Reed will be missing the first four games. Malik Knowles. Uh-huh. Yeah, that'd be NFI. Uh, injured reserve. Oh, maybe he is out. But yeah, Kenny Nwangwu, of course, will be uh, Kenny Nwangwu, injured reserve. James Lynch, ACL. Done. Unfortunately, Tay Gowen injured reserve. Uh, Abraham Bill Penn injured reserve. Uh, William Kenku injured reserve. Injured reserve. It says zero. So I do believe Nuangwo just misses the first four games. That's not the whole year, is it? Because a lot of times IR means the whole year. Like in the case of Mr. Uh, James Lynch, he's not going to play this year, unfortunately. Um, with the ACL, so that kind of sucks. It is what it is. Of course, head coach Kevin O'Connell, offensive coordinator Wes Phillips, defensive coordinator uh, Brian Flores, yes sir, and special teams Matt Daniels. Matt Daniels, heck of a lot better than what we had just a couple of years ago with Maloof, unfortunately. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, it's just Maloof wasn't real good. So that is your Minnesota Vikings lineup at the moment. Again, just making 100% sure I got all the players. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all the same players. And then a couple extras like Nick Vigil coming back from the Minnesota Vikings and, of course, the Miami running back. Um, so good, good to have those guys on board. Very much appreciated. No doot about it. Again, thank you, our lads. Of course, big shout-out to them for what they do, at least with this. They don't know me, but I know them, that kind of thing. Just, uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Gaskin. Miles Gaskin. That will be the Miami running back. So, ladies and gentlemen, your 20, 23 Minnesota Vikings. Are you excited yet? Well, maybe you should be. I don't know. Maybe you should be. Maybe you don't have to be. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to have to wait and see how that turns out at the end of the day. I'm still kind of, yeah, I'm getting still kind of nervous about Nwangwu, though. Okay, confirmed. That's what I thought. I had to kind of check again. I'm sorry for this. Yeah, that, that's what I've been hearing forever. It's four games. It's not the whole damn season. So, um, yeah, in some cases it could be, depending on it, but it's IR zero. So, okay, it is what it is, though. <laughs> Very happy to have Nwangwu still a possibility returning to the Vikings. We sure could, we, should, we I mean, we need him, but of course, again, at least we have guys that can return kicks and such. Uh, Jalen Naylor, of course, we'll have to wait and see how things turn out. Uh, overall, though, <clears throat> moves could still happen. Of course, there's a possibility the Vikings might sign Dalton Reisner at some point. It's a possibility. The talk is, you know, obviously then the, uh, the salary cap situation and, uh, you know, it, it's kind of cap purposes, isn't that? You might be able to, you might sign him like after week one, something like that. So, Dalton Reisner is still a free agent out there, and it could still happen. <clears throat> that name has been brought up multiple times. You still have uh, Kareem Hunt out there, but instead we signed Miles Gaskin, who uh, obviously there's something there when you saw that he's got pretty good receiving numbers for a uh, limited time. What did he get, like 50 catches? So almost 50 catches in 2021, 49. That's not bad. Four touchdowns? Not too bad there. So there's obviously a speed element there. Escapability, blah, buddy, blah, buddy, blah. <clears throat> We're going to go over the uh, schedule again and look at the record. Of course, the preseason sucks. We haven't won a game in the preseason since 1985. And not quite that bad, but you get the idea. But it ended up being a good season last year, record-wise, until the postseason started. Hopefully, that doesn't remain a frustration. I anticipate a similar start in the first two games. A win at home 
This one should be a comfortable win. Put it this way, you lose at home to Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Bucks. I'm not sure what to say. not sure what to say. So I'm not gonna have a huge preview about the Tampa Bay Bucks coming up here on September the tenth. But it's uh and I mean I'll get into it very briefly since it is the next game. Very briefly. Uh da da questionable. Really? Alexander Madison questionable? Najee Thompson, quick concussion, Jalen Naylor, yeah, he's been hurt for a bit, unfortunately with leg injury. Uh, Antoine Winfield Jr., questionable, undisclosed. Ooh, ooh. but that was uh, the 24th of August. Uh huh. So you kind of get the main idea, team comparisons, this and that. There's nothing there because of the, you know, nobody's played yet, this and that. So I'm going to bounce around Tampa Bay very, very briefly here. Again, they are the season preview. And yes, it is Baker Mayfield, of course. Running back is uh, Rashad White, guys like that. So. I don't know. Mike Evans is still there. Chris Goodwins is still there. Kind of leftovers from the uh, Tom Brady era that didn't last too long, but did did produce a Super Bowl, so you can't complain too much. Baker Mayfield, five years in the NFL already, coming in from the Cleveland Browns. Number one overall pick in the draft. Played a year with the uh, Carolina. He did play with Carolina last year, didn't he? He was just fantastic, wasn't he? Just absolutely great. Six touchdowns, six interceptions. Um... It's funny, because his, his second last year with Cleveland, Baker Mayfield, 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Yeah, and Cleveland looked awfully promising in 2020, but then they just couldn't get past the blink and blank Chiefs, and then the next year, major disappointment, and what about the Rams and the Carolina Panthers during the course of the season? Did Baker Mayfield. So it's actually 10 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. Very average. Has never eclipsed 4,000 yards, and I don't expect him to do so this year. Uh, Vikings need to win this game, and comfortably... I don't think it's going to be any type of a blowout or anything like that. I expect something along the likes of, you know, it, I mean, the, the offense of the Vikings is promising. The defense should be better. I don't know. I mean, this isn't the Mike Zimmer era. It just isn't. <laughs> I expect something along the likes of, I, I think the Vikings do reach 30 points in the game. I was like starting off with this low number in my head. And it's like, no, they got to get this Mike Zimmer vibe out of, out of our heads. That's long over now. Um, I'm thinking 31, <clears throat> 31-17 Vikings went comfortably over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 31-17. I might seem a little optimistic, but I might as well be op- optimistic because we're going to Philadelphia the next week on Thursday night. <clears throat> in fact, in just four days, which is just reeks of a loss, unfortunately. Thursday night football in Philly reeks of a loss, and it's going to be a loss. Unfortunately, the Vikings dropped to 1-1. One and one. <clears throat> The LA Chargers, I don't know who they are and what they're going to do. A nooner, Vikings win, 2-1 two to two and one record. At Carolina, I don't think there's a whole lot of excuses, even though they're a dangerous, you know, they're an improving team. And the Adam Thielen factor, who knows? Maybe he'll have some great moment against us. I hope not. As I sip my lemon LaCroix here, thinking out loud, I'm giving them a free plug. What the heck? What the heck? What are they going to give me anyway? More LaCroix. I mean, I'll, I'll take it, but yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay me a huge fortune here at this time. Vikings should beat the Carolina Panthers. That's my guess. Vikings go to 3-1. and one. Chiefs coming into the uh, U.S. Bank Stadium. I want to predict a win. I really do. I want to predict a win. The Vikings might lose to Carolina. That's I don't know. The Chiefs, I mean, we haven't beaten the Chiefs in the what's-his-face era. And I, I don't know. And until we do, it just reeks of another uh, situation. Like Tom Brady, we never beat Tom Brady. The Vikings never beat Tom Brady once. The Vikings never beat uh, the other guy, Peyton Manning, once. And it just kind of feels like that again. Hopefully, if we do beat him, it's in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. If the Vikings ever beat <laughs> that that annoying Chiefs team, that annoying Chiefs team with that guy who's bugging me more than he used to, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he bugs me more than I used to. I used to like him. Now it bugs me a little bit. The tight end bugs me more than anybody. Uh, Tyreek Hill pissed me off forever, but he's not there anymore. He's dancing around in Miami and not dancing around nearly as much, thankfully but still showing oodles of potential with that Chiefs team because of the the wonderful quarterback there. Uh, At Chicago, but no, yeah, I think the Vikings lose to Kansas City, bar nine, uh, you know, to the bottom line, three and two record. Chicago, you have to beat the Bears, four and three, four and two record, pardon me. San Francisco comes to Minneapolis on Monday night football. It reeks of a loss. It does. Let me see. So one and one, or no, one, oh, one and oh, one and one, two and one, three and one, three and two, four and two. San Francisco, with a, we're at four and two when the 49ers come to town. Mm. So four and two for Minnesota at this stage. 
I think the Vikings, uh, you know, we're, we have to beat, if we're legit, if we're like a legit team, at least a semi-legit team, we have to beat one of those guys. So the Vikings, I guess, will pick, will beat San Francisco instead of Kansas City. 5-2 and two record. Head to Green Bay for the classic, same old blankety-blank, same old bleep. <laughs> same old same old bleep let down in Green Bay. Vikings lows, 5-3. 5-3 three, three record. Yeah, we're not going to sweep the Packers. I, I don't think we are. I, I don't think so. I think the Packers will probably be better than people think a little bit, but not that much better. They'll probably miss the playoffs, but they're going to be a nuisance. Uh, just like when Rodgers first suited up for the Packers, they, they were a nuisance. Rodgers wasn't great the first day, but he was dangerous. And then that might be the case with Love there in Green Bay. At Atlanta, you, you got to beat those guys, right? You got to beat those guys, 6-3. and three. New Orleans comes to town with uh, Derek Carr. I think you can beat them, right? 7-3. and three. At Denver, at Denver on Sunday night, I don't know. It's just reeks of one of those annoying, funny type of nights. Ugh, seven and four at home versus Chicago. Eight and four by week. This is on, you know, at the end of November into early December already. Wow, by week. Uh, okay, so we're eight and four at this stage. Hopefully, I've got it correct. At Vegas, can we beat the Vegas Golden Knights? No, the Vegas Raiders, not the Golden Knights, but the Raiders. Nine, nine and four. I'm gonna go with the lucky. I'm gonna go with the vibe. Nine and four win versus the Raiders. Lose at Cincinnati the next week. At Cincinnati, no. Um, that would be ten and five. Nope, I missed something somewhere. Uh, regardless, I think the Vikings are gonna go eleven and six. So <laughs> one and zero versus Tampa. One and one versus Philly. See, I'm sorry for my stupidity here. 2-1 versus the Chargers. 3-1 versus Carolina. 3. See, that's where I'm screwing up. Yeah. yeah I'm losing my mind. 3-1 versus Carolina. 3-1 versus Carolina. 3-2 versus Kansas City. 4-2 versus the Bears. 5-2 versus San Francisco. After San Francisco. 5-3 after Green Bay. 6-3 Atlanta. 7-3 yeah, this is where I messed up somewhere along the line. Seven and three after New Orleans. Yeah, I went with eight for some reason. Uh, seven and four loss to Denver. Eight and four victory over the Bears. Nine and four victory over the Raiders. Nine and five lost at Cincinnati. Ten and five victory over Detroit. Eleven and five victory over the Packers. And then eleven six loss at Detroit on January the seventh. 11 and, uh, 11 and 6, so I am sticking with the 11 and 6 record. That's not just because. I, that's exactly where I'm going. 11 and 6 record for the Minnesota Vikings going into 2023. And hopefully a division title. Maybe losing at uh, Detroit might end up costing us the division. Wouldn't surprise me, but I do think the Vikings at least are a wild card club at the very least. And hopefully get a playoff win, get to the second round, and um, let the chips fall as they may. Maybe the Vikings make a miracle run and go all the way. Or... Here we go again. We lose to Detroit in the first round. I don't know. That'd be weird. I mean, Detroit's first playoff win since 91. Just like Cincinnati way back in the day. They actually won a playoff game that year as well. Um, Detroit and Cincinnati both won playoff games in 91. And then hadn't won until Cincinnati went to the Super Bowl two years ago. They finally won a game, but, uh, playoff game that year and went all the way. Almost won the whole in enchilada. Uh, Detroit, who knows, maybe Detroit goes on some insane run and goes to the Super Bowl, or they're 6-11, and 11. who knows, <laughs> they might be, you never know, or 7-10, and 10, or blah, 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 but um, Detroit's Detroit, anything could happen, but I don't think we sweep this Detroit team, I don't think, I just do not, I don't feel that at all, I don't think we're going to be sweeping Detroit a whole lot for the time being, just kind of like the Jim Caldwell days, they were pretty dangerous, they had a good defensive line and a really good offense during the course of that time. Right now, at least the offense is dangerous with um, that crazy guy as the head coach at the moment. Um, that would be Dan Campbell, the Mr. Kneecap guy. <laughs> as long as he doesn't literally kneecap the Vikings, I, I, I like him. As long as he's not literally looking, for injury, uh, looking to injure players, I like him. I like him just fine. With that said, um, why didn't I make this announcement earlier? I'm going to make it right now. You've been noticing that the Facebook page has been completely barren since like July, right? Well, for some stupid reason that I do not know and I do not understand is my Facebook page has been, it was unpublished, I guess was the term that Facebook said. It's like, it's almost, yeah, it was like something like they think I'm like illegally branding something. 
but that's impossible. I'm the only purple mafia that exists with the uh, when it comes to the, the podcasting world. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Supposedly that's what it is. Or like I'm, it would be, it probably would be more appropriate. Like if I was using the Minnesota Vikings logo, which I did unfortunately in the past, but I haven't been using it anymore. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. It says it's under review. So the Facebook page is kind of sitting there in limbo right now. Um, I did create a, which I should have done 10 years ago, five years ago, five minutes ago, but I should have done it more recently than I have. I did create an Instagram, an Instagram. It is at Purple Mafia Show, just like the Facebook page. At Purple Mafia Show is the Instagram. So I'll be posting stuff, I guess, on there. You basically post an image and then you're free to comment on it. I'll probably have like a caption. I'll be putting, um, you know, like similar type of thing where it's the two different logos of the two two teams that are going to play, like Vikings versus Tampa. And it'll be Vikings versus Tampa in-game thread is here. And you guys can comment away. Uh, on there. So Instagram. Instagram, if you use it, a lot of people probably don't, and a lot of people do. Um, I created Instagrams for all of my shows now. Pro Mafia, a flat video game flashback, Tim Rules Explosion, but this one's, of course, Purple Mafia show, um, Brave the Wild, and Freedom of Thought, for those that would like to listen to that one. Um, but yes, I have, there is an Instagram now for Purple Mafia, and it will be, it actually is in the show description for the previous couple of shows. I just put it in there. Uh, a couple of days ago, it is now in going to be in for this one as well. So do give Instagram, do give that page a follow, the Instagram account for Purple Mafia, and comment down there. Hopefully, the Facebook page comes back. But at the very least, this page now is an, uh, this show finally has an Instagram for the first time ever, which is kind of weird. But the way that goes. With that said, we'll take a quick break. Come back, and uh, you're going to hear the previous segment. And in segment number three, you're going to hear from Mad Martin. Segment number three, you're going to hear from Mad Martin. So we'll be back right after this for the previous segment. We are back here on Purple Mafia, segment number two, prediction segment. Going to look around the NFL and predictions and try to come up with a Super Bowl champion, conference finalists, and all that cool stuff. Also some teams that might disappoint and all that. Um, I'm going to start off with the analyst. Might as well do that. It is uh, the analyst.com NFL predictor. Their preseason predictions are going into the season, obviously. Looks like they have the Eagles with the most projected wins and their chances of winning the Super Bowl at 19.7%. Make the playoffs 91.5. Uh, 95.1. Uh, What's going on with the dyslexia here? Sorry. Uh, the Bills are the most likely team of everybody to win their division, interestingly enough. And, of course, the Cowboys just acquired... Uh, uh, Trey Lance, that doesn't necessarily put them in the Super Bowl, but does have them as the number four team with the most wins anyway. The Vikings rank behind the 49ers with 9.3 pre uh, predicted wins. Predicted losses, 7.6. Vikings are actually slightly behind the Jaguars. I don't know what's going on there. Weird. Jaguars have 9.5 predicted wins. So... But it's kind of like the overall scale, like winning the Super Bowl and such. The chances of the Vikings winning the Super Bowl are 3.7, making it 9.2. Uh, again, the Eagles are tops in a lot of stuff, making the conference final. They have them more than 50% chance. So I'm probably heading that way as well. Unfortunately, the Chiefs are number two in like every category. So uh, I think we're all sick and tired of them. I don't think I'm alone. They have the Lions. Uh, who's more, more likely to win the division? They say the Vikings, 49.5. The Lions, 29.5. So, yeah. The <laughs> Detroit Lions predicted to win, uh, projected 8.6. So, possible over under there, 8.4 in losses. Again, this is the uh, the analyst.com. A lot of people, looks like there, it looks like a lot of people are on the Eagles possibly winning the Super Bowl. With that pass rush and the excellent quarterback and such, I, I can't really, you know, be like, oh, the Eagles, what are you, crazy? Um, boy, they have the Bengals way down there. Mm. Well, if you're a betting person and if you're with DraftKings and all that, unfortunately, they're not a sponsor for this show anymore, but they are for uh, Brave the Wild. So check out that podcast, I suppose, and maybe I'll 
Maybe I'll advertise on there. No, I'm, I am I will on that one. <laughs> I'm kind of bouncing around here um, <clears throat> with that. Sorry for my semi-immature talk there. The Bengals, though, only 8.2 wins, 8.7 losses. There's people out there predicting the Bengals to win the championship. So this is the analyst. I think I want to bounce around to a couple other sites on predictions. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, the Bengals, that, they're kind of losing me with that one. Do they have them below the Detroit Lions? I think that, yeah, they do, right? How about getting to the Super Bowl? 0.7% of chance of winning the Super Bowl? I know the Bengals have never won one, and they have this history of, you know, choking and stuff, but this is a different team. And I would love to see, Bur I'd love to see Burrowhead become Burrowhead again and shut that son of a, you know, that tight end that I don't like, you know, he or shall not be named, shut his ass up. 1.9% chance of the Bengals making the conference or making the Super Bowl. 56 to making the uh, conference final. So I think if you are willing to, if you are one of those betters, and maybe this is still some kind of, if, if, if their odds are going against it in Vegas, you might want to bet on the Bengals a bit. You might want to. Um, you just might. That's kind of weird. Like betting on the Eagles, of course, you're probably going to bet more to win, you know, to win a certain amount, if you know what I mean. You're going to bet 10 bucks to win 8, you know, that kind of thing. Well, they're not that heavy a favorite, but <clears throat> I'll try to semi-digress here. CBS Sports. Uh, da, 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 da. So they have the Kansas City Chiefs as number one. Yuck. Cincinnati Bengals tied with them. And their odds of winning the Super Bowl are actually better than, well, not everybody. They're actually not. They have the Chiefs most likely to win the Super Bowl. Ick. Yuck. Uh, who's the other team that's uh, second most likely? Maybe it's the Eagles is number, the Eagles are number two. Win their conference, the Bengals, da, da, da. They're not the top, though. Um, sometimes some of these betting numbers I don't really understand, but so this one's a lot higher on the Bengals, but uh, possible Chiefs Bengals conference final again. I would not be surprised one bit if that was the case. Um, but these are all kind of like odds and percentages and stuff. Sometimes I miss the old days of the magazines where it just shows the teams in their divisions and all that, and then uh, you know conference finals is going to be the the Chiefs and the Bengals and the Super Bowl, you know, and the other side the Eagles and the Rams. Uh, yeah, Rams. I'm just messing around, and the Super Bowls the, the Buccaneers winning it all. Just kidding. Um, now this one, Fox Sports says the Bengals number one overall. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, what the heck? Okay, yeah, that's the previous. So they have the Bengals and Chiefs and Eagles all tied with Baltimore number four. So on and so forth, they have the Vikings only 8.5 wins. That's a big drop from 13. 8.5 wins. And of course, if 11.5 is the highest, obviously, you know, yeah. yeah. They're, you know, it's a conservative type of thing. It's just the way it shows up. Um, Jeff Schwartz, I believe he was on the Vikings, wasn't he? I believe he was. Wasn't Jeff Schwartz on the Vikings for a while? And yeah, he's obviously been an analyst for a significant amount of time and all that. Cool guy. I think he played on the Chiefs, too. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you want it? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know they're good. Uh, PFF, let's say I probably have to pay 50 bucks to even open the page. Okay, no, I don't. Not yet. What the heck is this? Um, no. Well, these are more like articles than anything else. I don't always have a huge... I'm not a huge fan of that kind of thing. Um, I just want to look at uh, over under win predictions and stuff. Okay, Bleacher Report. It's just interesting to look at. A lot of teams are picking the Vikings to win like nine games and stuff. So that kind of stinks. Uh, Bills with two twin point five, blah blah blah. Baltimore Ravens, yep. Cincinnati eleven point five, yep. But it's not, it's not a whole lot of conversation about who's winning the Super Bowl. I actually do have the Vikings winning or finishing the season eleven and six and winning the NFC North. Detroit Lions nine point five, Vikings eight point five. So they have. What the heck are you talking about? Oh, yay. So, under with eight projected wins. The pa Even the Packers are kind of like right where we are. You must really love uh, Mr. Love there. You must love the love. You must be feeling the love with the Green Bay quarterback, whoever he is. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, but my overall thoughts, my overall looks, I mean, I'm going to kind of just look at things and talk things over here now, look at the divisions and the conferences. The AFC North, I think Cincinnati does win that, but they're going to definitely have competition. Cleveland... You know, I mean, they did win seven games last year, despite God knows what the heck was going on there. Um, I, I don't know. I, th I think they kind of, uh, 
I think they've made a lot of mistakes for like a thousand years straight, basically. Uh, you have the future, boy, they have the future set at quarterback with Tim Couch. He's the legend. No, he didn't even come close. You know, one guy after another, and it's kind of been the case ever since. And I don't think the current quarterback that they give a billion dollars is going to be the uh, the savior either. I, I just don't. And I like Cleveland, dang it. I want them to win. I'd be thrilled to see the Cleveland Browns win the Super Bowl, but maybe after us. Um, Cincinnati's got to win the AFC North. I mean, though they do have really good competition with Baltimore. Pittsburgh and Cleveland, I think, are going to be third, fourth, whatever. Baltimore, Cincinnati. I think the division probably stays the same in terms of position. Cincinnati 1, Baltimore 2, Pittsburgh 3, Cleveland 4. Maybe Cleveland jumps over Pittsburgh, but probably not. Uh, they, their quarterback's going into their second year. That's Pickett. He's got a chance to do something. Uh, Jacksonville, Tennessee, Indianapolis, and Houston. Oof, very bottom heavy in that division. The AFC South, that is. Tennessee, I mean, they've got to be better than 7 and 10. I like what Vrabel does. Um, I don't know, and they keep drafting quarterbacks, you know, that drop off the last two years that have dropped off in the draft. So what do you say about that? Tannehill's still the guy, but at least they have some kind of insurance. Um, but it's not necessarily the best insurance. Jacksonville definitely has the best odds to win the entire enchilada in that division, but at plus 3,000, where Kansas City's a plus 600. That's a huge difference. I do think Jacksonville does win the division. I wouldn't be surprised if the standings stay about the same, but I think Tennessee will compete. Jacksonville's obviously got their Trevor Lawrence. That's their quote-unquote savior. And he did a hell of a job in that playoff game with a nice comeback. They actually won a playoff game last year to Jacksonville. And I think they, and after making the miracle comeback to make the postseason in the first place, winning five games in a row when they were 4-8, and eight, they made the playoffs and won a playoff game. Insanely impressive. Um, Jacksonville, I think, has a legitimate shot of, you know, being, being a threat. And, of course, they've got, um, you know, they got the Super Bowl winning coach Doug Peterson, of course, uh, Super Bowl winning coach of the Eagles now with Jacksonville. Looking good. <sighs> Kansas City, Los Angeles Chargers, not Rams, Las Vegas Raiders, and the Denver Bronx. No, the uh, Detroit Bronx. No, I'm just kidding. The Utah Broncos, right? Watch everybody moves, right? That'd be funny. <laughs> that would be hilarious. The Sacramento Chiefs, right? Like Sacramento Kings. The Los Angeles Chargers, Vegas Raiders, and the uh, Utah Broncos. Okay, I'm just, I gotta stop. A lot of these standings are probably going to be similar. You know, Vegas, we'll see if Jimmy Garoppolo or, can get going, could, you know, can get going, can actually stay healthy. It'd be nice. It's kind of a weird team, but it definitely has potential. And it'd be about time. Uh, Brian Hoyer's the backup. Man, that's a guy that I really was a fan of for a while, but then he had that terrible injury years ago uh, when he was with Cleveland and all that. But he's definitely had some... Uh, some nice run. Man, he's still a backup in the NFL. Crazy. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy. You know, and they did get, uh, yep, they were able to get uh, Josh Jacobs inked for at least a year, ending the holdout. So, good for them. Amir Abdullah, the former Vikings, a member of that club. <clears throat> so on and so forth. Devontae Adams is still there. If Garoppolo stays healthy, Vegas could finish second. If he doesn't, which he probably won't, because, I don't know, L.A. should be in second again. I, I don't know, though, but, I mean, Denver should jump up, of course, because you got that you know, the anti-Vike, as PA calls him. Um, that would be uh, Sean Payton, the anti-Vike. They've got to be better. He's kind of an ass, and I think everybody knows that. He made an ass of himself. Um, we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Kansas City should win their division. Lucky us. Kansas City should win their division and uh, still compete for a conference championship round and all that. Buffalo, Miami, New England, and New York. New York Jets with, of course, again, Saul as the coach. He's also Lebanese, but, but uh, uh, let's just say I'm half Lebanese and I'm a Christian. Sala is all Lebanese. Uh, doesn't mean Lebanese doesn't mean you're Christian or Muslim. It could be either one. But uh, Lebanese, in, in his side, he's a Muslim. So just make, making that. Unfortunately, they dropped off the face of the earth later in the year, but didn't have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. <clears throat> so now they have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. They should be better. Though bringing in some of these uh, ex-Packer receivers isn't necessarily going to save the day. The Jets, I mean, it's kind of a sink or swim. It could be an amazing run. They could uh, yeah, uh, they could make a run to the AFC title game. I don't know. I, I have my doubts. This might be Buffalo's year to finally break through. And if it, it's going to have to be one of these days. It's going to have to be, isn't it? Uh, Cincinnati's odds are actually lower than Buffalo's, but you'd think they would be. Buffalo, I mean, just how great they were all season. 
They were the number one team in the league for the longest time. Then they lost a couple games, and then they got red hot at the end of the year. Cincinnati got red hot as well after starting, like, horse bleep. I mean, they were crappy at the beginning of the year, weren't they? Weren't they, like, 4-4? Four and four? So they finished 12-4, and four, and then they lost to that awful team with that tight end with the biggest mouth in the history of the world that can shove free, I, I, I don't know, just take the ball and shove it down his throat until he chokes on it. Oh, I can't take it. Oh, God. Please let Kansas City lose. Please, Lord, let the Chiefs lose. Don't even get to the conference final. <laughs> Buffalo has to win that division. Miami should still be competitive. Um, the Hawaiian quarterback, I hope he's going to be okay. Uh, he did say something that I liked very much, at least the movie he chose. <clears throat> but uh, we'll leave that to uh, freedom of thought if I ever get to that. <laughs> but um, Miami should still be, I don't know, you might have three teams make the playoffs in that division. I think there's a real chance because I think you're only getting one out of the AFC South. Maybe you only get one out of the AFC West. And yeah, that would be an AFC West team that would miss because I think Baltimore, Cincy both make it. And if they don't, I think that's a huge disappointment. The Jets should be in playoff contention. They already have a great defense. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Several times when the Jets pop up, their defense is like awesome. You know, like really cool. Great defense. And then, you know, they have a uh, wily veteran at quarterback like um, Vinny Testaverde. Like a guy named Brett Favre, but they didn't make any playoff run there. And Favre's bicep got messed up. Luckily for him, it was ready to go for the Vikings the next year and took us to the NFC Championship. We'll leave that where that is. Yeah, check out episode 58 if I remember correctly. Um, like basically how the curse lives on. Yeah, that was so depressing, but a great uh, episode, according to a lot of people. I do think the only team that misses the playoffs is the Patriots, and that's hard to say for me, but yeah, but I, but I can live with it. It's okay. They, they won a billion divisions. They won, you know, six Super Bowls. Tied with the Pittsburgh Steelers for all time, so I can't get too upset. They can have a down year or two. Maybe they'll get their next Tom Brady someday. Who knows? Um, the Jets will make the playoffs. The New York Jets will make the playoffs. That's probably not the the, the bravest. Um, that's probably not the bravest prediction of all time. Miami should make it as well. I think they're going to be like ten and seven, nine and eight. I think the Jets are going to be like ten and seven, nine and eight. But they might be a huge threat once the playoffs roll around, especially with that defense. It, it, it's the defense that's the real threat. And then Rodgers, you know, once he gets rolling, could be special. <clears throat> it's crazy all the hot and cold streaks at the end of the year. Even Pittsburgh almost made the playoffs <clears throat> last year, which was the darndest thing. But, yeah, I mean, once you're finally starting over at quarterback, instead of playing a guy that was pretty much half-retired for the last four years of his career, I mean, whatever, his shoulder hanging off of, the, off of him, basically, was basically hanging. But um, <clears throat> back to the point here. Let's get to the AFC title game. <sighs> Step out in faith. Kansas City, go bleep yourself. Buffalo versus Cincinnati, which would be an epic battle and be a lot of fun. I'm going with it. <clears throat> I'm going with it. Laugh at me. Laugh at me. Maybe laugh with me later when they do get there to the AFC title game. One one of the um, teams is going to find the, one is going to go back to the Super Bowl, of course. Buffalo for the first time since uh, 94 when they got hammered by the Cowboys for the second year in a row. That was sucky. Well, 93 season, but 94, you know, January, whatever. Or Cincinnati just a couple of years ago and before that, way back in 1988, where they, in every single Super Bowl, they pretty much lost a close game, you know, and it's it's disappointing to a California team, basically San Francisco both times. Uh, very heartbreaking in 88, I'm sure. Going against uh, Joe Montana, the greatest of all time, uh, other than uh, Tom Brady. Those are the two greatest ever. Um, Burrow, I mean, I would not be surprised if it is kind of like Montana to Brady to Burrow. I'm hoping that, but a lot of people are like, uh, hello, you know, it's the other guy in Kansas City. Come on, man. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather see Joe Burrow. I just would. There's some something about that Chiefs team just bothers me. They're, ugh. There's just a there's just a cocky bug in Kansas City right now. Too much attitude. I didn't, you know, I mean, Cincinnati, when they were kind of cocky, it was a stupid cocky uh, where they were injuring people. That was really dumb. Luckily, that group is long gone. Um, hopefully, the Bengals can uh, overcome. And I do think the Bengals will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Cincinnati Bengals will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. The NFC East, we're going to the NFC. That's right. 
Philadelphia, Dallas, New York Giants, and Washington Commanders, which supposedly will have a new name again at some point with the Magic Johnson group that took over the Washington Commanders. Whatever. The, more, the Washington Commanders will be competitive, they'll be dangerous, they'll be in a, a nuisance, and they won't make the playoffs. The Jets will be competitive, they'll be a nuisance, they'll be tough to play against, but they won't make the playoffs. The New York Giants. No, the New York Giants will not make the playoffs. At least I don't think so. Probably not. Uh, Dallas and Philadelphia are going to make the playoffs, and Philadelphia is going to win the division. Washington is going to finish third. New York's actually going to finish last, but they will be competitive. I think they're going to flip-flop. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe New York will stay right where they are. They are well-coached, and they beat us, but they're not that good. And you just signed your quarterback, your quarterback who was in a contract year and played like as average as he always has been, and um, I don't know, and signed for a billion dollars. I don't think New York is going to go up. I think they're going to go down slightly and miss the postseason. Washington will be slightly closer, in my opinion. Philadelphia wins the division again, and they are a massive threat to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Dallas will will da- da- Dallas will dazzle like they tend to. Obviously, they have some great players on both sides of the ball. They have a great offense and an incredibly lethal pass rush, but the Dallas Cowboys are not even going to make the NFC title game. At least, I don't think so. Maybe they will against their division rival there, if you know can kind of guess who that is, but um, which is a great rivalry, of course. That whole division is filled with incredible East Coast rivalries, except for Dallas is not an East Coast team, but the others are, and they've had great rivalries with the Giants, the Redskins, and well, <coughs> the Redskins, yeah, well, they were the Redskins, and of course the Philadelphia Eagles over many, many years. But Philadelphia will still win the division. Dallas will be a huge threat. They're going to annoy people. They're going to beat the crap out of certain teams. And, you know, they're going to blow people out, but then they're going to blow it when it matters. They'll probably get to the second round of the playoffs and lose. NFC North will be last, but uh, whatever. NFC South, Tampa Bay actually made the playoffs last year by the skin of their teeth. They're not going to do that this year. I don't know who's going to win that division. Probably the Carolina Hurricanes. No, the Carolina Panthers. The NFC South. I'm going to go with Carolina. I think Tampa actually finishes dead last. Because they're, yeah, I think Tampa finishes dead last. Atlanta, I'm not sure what's really going on there. New Orleans, I don't know. They're going to be a threat. They're going to be, I think New Orleans and Atlanta to kind of take a step up a little bit. Atlanta, or excuse me, Tampa Bay will remain, will, will move to the bottom, not remain. They will move to the bottom. Derek Carr is the quarterback of the Saints. Yep, that's one of the differences now. Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, there, there's creativity there, and their coach was a good defensive coordinator before. Looks a lot like a former district manager I had when I used to work in the service world several years ago. Uh, so I got a kick out of that. Elvin Kamara is kind of a jackass. How talented, but I don't know. I mean, how, how good is he going to be? We'll see. I mean, it's he's, he's stayed good for the most part. Michael Thomas is a threat, but he's hurt a lot. Um, I don't know. They're, I, I don't think the Saints are a playoff team, but maybe. And if they are, it'll be like 9-8 and eight and then out in the first round. That's pretty much the Saints, I, I think, right now. Same with anybody else if they actually make the postseason out of the NFC South. Uh, Carolina will win the division, 10-7, and 9-8. and eight. Adam Thielen will be a factor, but he's not going to be that good. He's not. I'm sorry, guys. I, I love Adam Thielen. He's one of us. Andy Dalton's the quarterback. <laughs> uh, Andy Dalton, yeah, guy who's owned the Vikings forever, except finally last year that changed. Uh, Andy Dalton, that's just funny. Oh. Uh, is this for real? Okay, Bryce Young, but Andy Dalton for now probably. Of course, looks like he might have an injury. They're looking at Andy Dalton, the quarterback, but Bryce Young, obviously, he's probably, you know, it's just a matter of time before he takes over. And uh, the ba- the Carolina Panthers will probably be division champions for a while, I think. Uh, terrible preseason, but so the Vikings suck in the preseason, too. That doesn't mean we're going to 0 for 3 and all that. That doesn't mean it's the end of the world. We sucked in the preseason last year. Um, it does show that the Vikings lack depth, and they lacked depth all season last year, and when you needed help in certain times, the the help didn't really come, not so much. A little bit on the offensive line, thankfully, with uh, Schlotman, but then he broke his leg, the poor guy, which I felt really bad, man, because that's a guy scratching and surviving. You know, he finally got to have uh, extensive time in the NFL, um, he got to have extended playing time and all that with the injuries to both of their, you know, uh, you know, to both bookends uh, on our offensive line. Of course, Derrissaw and uh, Brian O'Neill. But then, you know, and then he got and then he broke his leg. Oh, that felt so bad. But uh, luckily, yeah, luckily for him, I don't think all is lost. 
of course. Uh, back to the NFC South, if I ever get back to it, because uh, I'm just a dummy. Carolina wins the division. I think the Saints finish second. Atlanta, I don't know, and Tampa. Ah, Tampa's going to suck and hope to get their quarterback of the future in next year's draft. Atlanta, Desmond Ritter, okay. Taylor Heineke, okay. All right, sure. Sounds good. Sounds like fun. Uh, Desmond Ritter, of course, coming in out of Cincinnati. Rookie quarterback coming in. Desmond Ritter is competing in all that third-round pick, 10th pick overall, or 10th pick in the third round in 2022. So it's between guys like that. Desmond Ritter right now is looked on as the starter because Taylor Heineke is kind of like one of those guys. He's a really nice backup, but gosh, he's 30 already. That's weird. And Logan Woodside, I don't know. I don't know him from the broadside of a barn. Okay, sorry. Uh, Kyle Pitts, obviously nice tight end. Blah, 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 blah. I know I'm going on and on. Atlanta, why do I care about Atlanta at all? They're not making the playoffs. They're just not. They'll have their cute little scratches here and there, but they're not going anywhere. Carolina's the only team that's made it. I don't know why I've stayed on this awful division as long as I have Tampa's last. Next, please, mercifully, NFC West. The San Francisco 49ers are an NFC threat, no doubt about it. You just might get that 1988 rematch, and it'll be about time, and 1981. I'm an 80s guy, 80s music, 80s movies, 80s, 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 80s. 80s restaurants, 80s everything. Everything 80s. 80s president, too. Yeah, I said it on Purple Mafia. 80s president, too. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, <laughs> he happened to come from California as well. Anyhow. Um, San Francisco, yeah, San Francisco will win that division, I think, comfortably. The Rams are bound to be slightly better than they were, but not much. They'll compete, but they're going to be like 7 and 10, 8 and 9. And I think uh, the other guy, the great coach of the Rams, is going to, eventually he's going to step away and make a million dollars in the media. Yeah, Stafford is good. <laughs> I remember Mark Ripien was a backup for an awful Rams team in the, in the 90s, mid-90s. After winning a Super Bowl with the Redskins before, Cooper Cup, one of the best players in the NFL, we know. This is all offensive stuff, obviously. Defense is really good there still as well, but they're getting older. Rams are not a huge threat, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why this is going on. Sorry, I keep screwing this up. Rams will not be a threat to make the playoffs. Seattle should be a threat, but they're not going to be that dangerous. Arizona should probably ride the pine again, unfortunately, but I guess you never know. I'd love to see Arizona get better. I like everything about Arizona. I do. Everything. Um, not because I like Kyler Murray, but I like everything about just Minnesota, uh, excuse me, Arizona in general. Like, I, I just like to see Arizona teams do well for the most part. Um, but I think they finish in last again, unfortunately. Hope I'm wrong. Maybe the Rams are last place. Um, I don't think Se Seattle's going to be a last. They should be competitive. And maybe they got kind of lucky last year. But bottom line... NFC West is the 49ers division to lose, and it's just how I stand. Uh, luckily, Brock Purdy is back from that potential, what was it, like a Tommy John type of injury. That was nuts. God, what the heck, man. Um, yeah, he's the starting quarterback. Uh, Sam Darnold is the number two, and Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen is number three. Sam Darnold did win the number two job. And then, of course, the uh, San Francisco 49ers just... You know, just now, basically, <laughs> as a just now, <laughs> some recording segment number two, anyway, uh, traded. Thankfully, it happened by then. Traded Trey Lance to the Dallas Cowboys. Not that I think there's any immediate effect to the Dallas Cowboys season by acquiring Trey Lance, but there's a possible, possible heir apparent to uh, Dak Prescott. We shall see. Christian McCaffrey is a dual threat. We know receiving, catch, uh, receiving, and running, and all that. Debo Samuel is very similar that way. Brandon Ayuk, blah 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 blah. blah. George Kittle is one of the best tight ends in the league. Uh, nice offensive line sometimes. Um, Brock Purdy, just stay healthy, and we'll see. That fifth, the uh, Mr. Irrelevant of the 22, 2022 NFL Draft can continue to be Mr. Irrelevant and possibly take his club to the Super Bowl next season. Um, I can't, yep, so I had Buffalo-Cincinnati in the AFC. I'm almost thinking rematch here in the NFC, and it's, it wouldn't be the first time it's happened. I mean, 49ers and Cowboys was like, how many times? So, <laughs> you know, Packers and Cowboys, or Packers and uh, Cowboys were in the NFC title game, I think, more than once. Maybe not. Um, Packers and 49ers have been in the NFC title game a few times, or at least the postseason, generally speaking. Um, gosh, it, I, 
I can't think of anybody else in the NFC other than possibly the Minnesota Vikings if we jump up enough, or the Dallas Cowboys to possibly uh, knock out Philadelphia or San Francisco, pardon me, in the second round. But it would be the Vikings, yes, because it would be the Vikings or the Cowboys to do it. But right now, I can't really see anything other than San Francisco and Philadelphia in the NFC title game. And there's a pretty good chance we got a Philadelphia-Cincinnati Super Bowl. But San Francisco's bound, this San Francisco team is bound to get to a Super Bowl. And maybe there is that Super Bowl loss hangover with Philly where they're just, it's just for whatever reason, they can't get back this year. And maybe in a year or two, Philadelphia ends up finishing the job, going all the way and winning it. It's just finally, that's it. It's over. We're, we're sick of not getting it. Give me the damn trophy, which is a personal thing as well behind the scenes. Let's leave that alone. San Francisco will represent in the NFC. In the NFC, I think the 49ers break through after making multiple NFC title games and losing to the Rams. And the Eagles, San Francisco will break through and represent the NFC. But Cincinnati is your world champion in 2023. Cincinnati wins the Super Bowl for the 2023 season. And of course, February 2024, Cincinnati will edge the 49ers in a pretty good game with uh, great offense, great defense, this and that. Cincinnati will win a Super Bowl for the first time ever and avenge the Super Bowl losses of 81 and 88. Cincinnati is the Super Bowl champion. I've said it six times, but, well, seven. I don't even know how many times I've said it, but Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. There we go. We'll win the Super Bowl. We'll win the Super Bowl (laughs) at the end of the day. So with that, we'll take a quick break and get to fan interaction if there's anything left because, uh, like I may have mentioned already, Facebook has been acting up and has basically been, it's basically treating me like Purple Mafia is like, like I stole it from someone else. Um, I don't think I did. I think Purple Mafia has been around longer than any podcast in Minnesota Vikings podcasting lore, other than anything the Vikings ever did in the past, possibly. So um, it may be a very sparse edition of uh, fan interaction. We'll see. Greetings, Joey. So the draft finished yesterday. I look forward to seeing your takes on it, to be honest, and um, what you thought of what Quasi and the front office actually did in this draft. Personally, I quite liked it. It was what I was hoping for, that they wouldn't sell the farm and go up and get a quarterback. Because I I just think that would, would be insane if you're having to use a first this year, maybe one next year and the year after for guys that perhaps perhaps don't have that high ceiling. So to go and get a wide receiver in the first round made perfect sense. It's good value because, as we've said, going out and getting free agent wide receivers of good quality would cost us a lot of money. And certainly this year we haven't got it. So it's a good accompaniment to JJ and uh, our tight end. So very pleased with that. And in looking at what they did in the sort of lower part of the draft, I suppose when you're drafting three to seven, you've got to look at those developmental players and perhaps swing and hope you hit on all of them or hit on some of them. Like, like the fact that they've need, added much needed depth to the secondary and the defensive line, it was so badly needed. So it's made perfect sense. They're cheap, they're young, and perhaps they develop into great players or good players or players that can do the job, which is what we need. And the fifth round uh, pickup of a quarterback. Um, interesting. Jalen Hall. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit of reading. He sounds like it could be a, a fun project to watch develop. But um, at that low level, it's always a, a massive risk. And, well, I guess, I guess we'll see. I mean, I would kind of hope that if, if Quaz is building a team for the future, then I still kind of hope that Cousins gets traded and we get some sort of value for him and they either bring in a veteran or perhaps perhaps they could get Lance for an exchange and, a, you know, a, couple, a, a second and a, a third for Cousins would be great and that gives us a season to look at Trey Lance, see 
if there is anything there. But it puts us then in an interesting position because if we don't have a good season, we only win four or five games. We are in the uh, the quarterback sweepstakes for um, 24, which does intrigue me. And to be honest, I'd rather take a year of pain and find the future at the quarterback position because it is obviously the most important position in football. And we never seem to address it. And we continue to just be a middling team that can't kick the bloody thing over the final line and pick up the Lombardi. And that has to be ultimately the aim. If not, what is the point? OK, Joey, I look forward to listening to your post-draft analysis. Take care, my friend, and skull brothers and sisters. And I thank you for that call oh so much. Dave Martin, Mad Martin, coming in out of Northern Scotland. And I can't apologize enough for missing that call way back in the, the, end, of, uh, the end of April, I believe it was. So... Definitely frustrating on my part. I'm really sorry. You know, I'm really sorry. And then when I shut down for the long time, it's like, yeah, you know, once I'd missed that one, once I'd missed the call, and then I shut down forever. And then I come back for the um, the uh, tying up loose ends episode much later than probably most of you were hoping. <laughs> I apologize. I just shut down this year for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I, and you know, I, I, and then it just didn't cross my mind I, I to look and check for... Uh, calls and I, I, I deeply apologize to uh, Man Martin for that and obviously again to the listeners as well because it's not a it's <laughs> it's not a mystery. Man Martin is as good a caller as you're ever gonna get on a show. So it's like missing out on the, those calls is not a good thing. So thankfully there he is. Dave Martin, Mad Martin back on the air there. You know, I, I definitely agree with the whole idea of being, you know, stuck in mediocrity forever and I, I fear that. It seems like they're always the Vikings have always been that way. Like, oh, oh, we we can't we can't just drop off. We can't just let things go for a couple of like like for a year or two to hopefully finally get that quarterback, like as you said, to kick the thing over the hill finally once and for all. Get rid of the uh get rid of the frustration, get rid of the, the drought that's been hanging on to this franchise forever. So I mean hope hopefully somehow, some way things are heading in that direction. It does appear that the Vikings are focused on the possibility of uh, getting a young quarterback in a year or two here for the long-term future of the team. Obviously, it's not Jaron Hall. At least I would not think so. Preseason, he looked kind of okay. He looked okay. He looked promising for a minute there. Obviously, limited and all that. And isn't he already like 25 years of age as well? So he's one of those kind of guys um, where he's probably going to be a nice backup for a while. And that's about it. Um, Kansas City was a competitive team. And... You know, with uh, Alex Smith, then they made the, they made the daring trade, and then you know Alex Smith was a Pro Bowl kind of guy like Kirk Cousins, and then all of a sudden there's Patrick Mahomes. As much as I hate the Chiefs, and I don't like Patrick Mahomes as much as I used to, don't like the attitude. I, I just I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> I don't know. Getting a little too 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 getting a little too cocky for me, um, which is just about every pro athlete these days, by the way. <laughs> but to the point though yeah i mean well it worked i mean they did the right they made the right move and they were able to acquire a good quarterback even while still in contention that was kind of lucky obviously to be able to trade up and, and get the player that you want and it works out and everything uh not only works out it really 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 works out that kind of thing like mahomes didn't go number one overall somebody else did which was obviously not nearly as successful <laughs> and um, the Vikings have to hope and pray for something similar in the next couple of years. Obviously, you have enough talent that the team is going to be at least semi-competitive for a while, but uh, definitely don't disagree. I mean, this team needs that quarterback of the future. I don't see Kirk Cousins hoisting Lombardi for the Vikings. It would be a beautiful thing, and I don't think Dave Martin does either. Um, it would be a cool thing to see him holding the trophy, yelling, you like that? I mean, it would be the coolest thing ever, but I doubt that's going to happen. Um, we'll see. But, yeah, good thoughts there. And obviously, again, getting the cornerbacks and all that uh, in the draft, not the dumbest thing ever. It was a nice draft, but, of course, again, you're hoping and praying for that long-term solution at the quarterback position in the not-too-distant future, uh, no doubt about it. One thing I don't like about Instagram is when there's a video and it just repeats and repeats and repeats and re Oh, my God, it's annoying. Um, Twitter does the same thing, though. Twitter and uh, Instagram are actually quite similar that way. But again, do join that. Uh, if you have a Instagram account, please, please, please follow 
Purple Mafia Show on Instagram. It does exist, finally. Please follow Purple Mafia on Instagram. Here we are in Fan Interaction segment. Unfortunately, I don't anticipate this being very long. Here's your Facebook uh, conversation on the, for Fan Interaction. All right, so that's the end of Facebook. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Facebook. Not not the guys that are on Facebook. You guys are great. Thank you so much. And now you have X Twitter, Twitter X, Post X. I joked about that in the last episode. Yes, it's X, it's Twitter, it's something else. Uh, Mad Martin says, new podcast, and then the applause. The season is almost here. I think 11 and 6 is realistic. This season, Mad Martin continues saying, talking about calls, did you miss my, my draft call? Yes, I did. Sure, I sent it in, and yes, you did. And it finally got played. So, so really sorry, Dave. Um, I said, I will make absolutely sure to check. Really sorry if I missed it. And if if and when I find it, it will definitely get on the show. Sorry for my silliness. Um, and, uh, well, there it is. It got on the show. <sighs> Fortunately, I believe that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Tenny Brown, for retweeting it. But I was saying, yeah, for some strange reason, the basic page of Pearl Mafia is under review, quote-unquote. So in this case, every so in case anybody's wondering what the heck is going on, I don't know either. But the show will go on. The 2023 season preview episode should be completed next weekend. Yep, that was a week ago that I posted that. I um, also want to thank Tanae, coming out of New Zealand, um, Malcolm McSween out of California, IA, and Vinrock Vince Germano, Cleveland Browns fan, but still a very loyal follower of the Purple Mafia show, Timberwolves Explosion, and a great, great friend coming in out of Australia, retweeting the most recent episode, Purple Mafia episode 402, tying up loose ends 2023, well, this is episode 403, season preview 2023, and unfortunately, again, the fan interaction is very limited this time around because Facebook page is completely dead for two months. Hopefully, it comes back at some point. Instagram has been created. Please, please, if, if you have an Instagram account, please jump on board there. It'd be great. Let's get that show finally. <laughs> Let's give that show some love, that account some love on Instagram. Hopefully, the Purple Mafia Instagram can grow into something decent in the next couple of years, because it's not going to happen overnight, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I should have at least somewhat of a following on there fairly early on, because it's the Purple Mafia show, dang it. This show is old. It's been around forever. It's established a little bit. Um, I have five followers so far. Five. So, that's how new the page is. Get in there. Try to be one of those few people that can say you were there when there was single-digit followers. When Pearl Mafia show reaches a hundred, and I'm like the king of the world, right? A hundred. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just messing around. But with that said, thank you so much for listening. Really sorry about the short fan interaction. It's going to shorten the show this year, but that's how it is. I mean, every year is different. At least the show's released on time. At least I'm not delayed by moving and my wife being sick and stuff like that by getting married, moving, and my wife being sick, like in 2015, when the Pearl Mafia show missed the first two weeks of the season. That didn't help this, the show. But then all of a sudden, the season, the team played so well that year, unexpectedly, that the numbers went way up. So thank you <laughs> at the time, Teddy Bridgewater, um, <clears throat> Mike Zimmer, and, and others, Terrence Newman, guys like that, for playing so well and saving that season for Pearl Mafia. <laughs> we'll see how this year goes. Kevin O'Connell... Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins definitely helped last year in a big way. T.J. Hawkinson helped as well. And, uh, well, he's making his money now. Congratulations, number 87, T.J. Hawkinson, 68.5 million over just four years. So, congratulations, T.J. Yep, uh, yep, you're ready to rock and roll. You're set now. With that said, have yourself a merry little Viking season. Let this and that be right. Yes, guys, just please stay healthy. And uh, hope to hear from you. Keep calling in. Dave Martin, Mad Martin, love you so much. Um, would love to hear from Malcolm again. But if uh, it's Twitter, it's Twitter. Uh, if it's uh, if it's uh, Instagram, it's Instagram. And if Facebook ever comes back, if I'm banned for life because I'm not Purple Mafia show, I'm not. I think I'm the Purple Mafia show. But if Facebook decides I'm not the Purple Mafia show, then uh, I guess I'm not the Purple Mafia show. But right when Facebook finally was getting some super duper momentum again, th that happened. Twitter has been, like, basically shadow banned the last two years for some reason. Probably maybe I'm cursing during the games, and i got to cut that out. But it feels like the show has been stuck at, like, the same amount of followers forever after losing about 200. So, I don't know. It sucks. Yeah, like, the reach is very limited. So, I'm not sure what to say. With that said, thank you, everybody. Oh, yes, and Dellen Cook signed with the New York Jets. Congratulations to 
Dalvin Cook, I guess, 8.6 million. So it's a good it's a good paycheck for us for a year. I'll have to wait and see how that turns out. But congratulations to um, Dalvin Cook. Congratulations, Delvin Cook. We'll see how that turns out. With that said, take care, and we'll be back in a week to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game review.